Today is an exciting day. I got it for thirty-seven fifty. That's the spot. That's the sweet spot. That's where you want to be. It's money, money, money. Bubba box truck, Corey. Hello, YouTube. Box truck, Corey here. And today is an exciting day for a few reasons. The biggest, I am sitting in the back bumper of my new box truck to convert into a full-time living home. A couple other good things. It's a beautiful sunny day. Got a nice beer. Good Canadian Laker Red. 5.5% alcohol. That's important when you're drinking beer. You gotta get the good alcohol. Ah, well, don't you worry. It's not the only one I have. I have 11 others ready to go. So the day is only getting better. Third reason, aside from the new box truck, the beer. It's my Tilly hat. A little sunny out today. Dug it out. Keep the sun off my bald head. So we're going to talk about why I chose this truck. It's uh, 1997 Chevy 16 foot box truck. Go for a little walk around it here. And there's a lot of advantages to this particular one that we're going to go through. Now I've looked at many and it's not perfect because, you know, perfect would be brand new and that's out of my price range. But this one is the next best thing. Ooh. It's got many good features. Let me turn you around. Now the main reason I chose this truck is because it has a new engine transmission tires, and a few other things. The tires, the rubber, is brand new. Not even the corners worn off. I can't afford a new one, so I want a used one that has as many new parts as possible. And this one does. It was bought originally for a courier company use. You can still see the sticky stuff, but uh, it was Cardinal Couriers who bought it actually locally right here in, near Toronto. And uh, they drove it for 400,000 kilometers, what, about 300,000 miles. And when the engine blew, it went to auction. And the second owner bought it from the auction, put the new engine in, rebuilt the tranny, and was setting it up to use for their business to uh, deliver composite decking. Now, unfortunately, their business left Canada and... Uh, moved to the US and they didn't want to take their vehicles with them. So this was one of the two remaining trucks that they hadn't sold. Most of what they had were big rigs, but this uh, cube van, box van, box truck, whatever you want to call it, was available and uh, needed a little cosmetic work on the outside. They didn't uh, didn't find any takers before me. I guess they were asking four grand, 
they put more than that into the the engine and tranny rebuild and the tires and uh, worked out in my favor although it's unfortunate we have another company leaving Canada to go to the States because labor is cheaper and uh, with free trade Canada has lost a lot of manufacturing to the US if you listen to Trump you would think that the US has just done terrible with the free trade agreement with Canada but that's just not fact the facts are that Canada has lost so much manufacturing. And this is just one more example. But it works out to my advantage. So there's a few things it's going to need. This front grille. It's a little worn. I think I'm going to paint it. There's uh, some paint peeling on the hood. Looks like... Uh, Something bumped into it here because we got a little ding, but these are all minor things Still some glue residue from the courier company But these are all things that I can easily fix what I can't do or don't want to do is replace the major mechanics Another big benefit for me is the interior most of these trucks I've looked at, the interior has been torn apart, just beat to hell. This one is in great condition. There's uh, really nothing major wrong. We have the headliner that's peeled a bit from the ceiling, but a little spray glue, five, ten bucks for that, we'll solve that. The uh, visor on the driver's side has come off, but it's right here. Can't be too hard to put that back on. The seats are in good condition. They've been covered, but the original seats are good too. The dash is not beat up. It's, uh, it looks like a couple year old truck. Not something that's been, you know, pounded since 97. The one drawback is there's no air conditioning. That's the one feature I would have liked to have had, but I've got a solution in mind. I'm going to put a house air conditioner in here, and that's going to cost me about 200 instead of a vehicle air conditioner that you know they break my car I just spent over a thousand dollars for a new compressor I'll never have to do that in this the AC brakes I just spent 200 bucks and buy another one the handles are all manual the door locks no power that's awesome fewer things to break I love the aerodynamic front end with this unicell box Let's see if we can get a good image here but it's uh, it's very aerodynamic it's going to be much better than the, like a uh, class CRV front the engine is a 6.5 liter diesel I wanted a diesel I always wanted one it's just a bucket list thing uh, realistically I, I don't know that there's a benefit over gas. I, I disagree that there really is. But I always wanted a diesel truck. And now I have one. What else can I tell you? If you watched my other video, should I buy this truck? It's, uh, it's the same truck. I did buy it. They were asking 4000 and I got it for $37.50, Canadian, and fully certified, passed emissions, and it passed the safety check. Now, if you're from Ontario, you'll know what this yellow sticker is all about. But if you're not from this area, this is very important. This is a commercial vehicle inspection sticker. And it means that this truck has passed a vigorous safety check. 
there's been lots of issues around Toronto with wheels coming off of trucks and uh, some some really bad accidents. So a garage that will affix their label with their guarantee says a lot. They have gone over this truck with a fine tooth comb and everything safety wise is up to snuff. A lot of the trucks for sale don't come certified and that is going to cost thousands. So to get this one, $37.50, fully certified with a commercial inspection sticker, I don't need it because I'm going to convert it to uh, recreational vehicle use. It's going to be a motor home. But to have it initially means that it has passed a stringent inspection. But there are still a few things. The batteries don't seem to be too great. The truck was sitting for a while and I noticed when I picked it up at the mechanic that they had a charger on the battery. So, is it not holding the charge? Will it not start? I don't know. But, I may have to replace the batteries. These wheels, they have some surface rust. I'm going to paint them. The back ones, they have even more rust. But, this is just minor, minor stuff. No big deal at all. All the important stuff has been dealt with. The rear view roll up door is in good condition. Many I looked at, they were missing panels and the doors would need to be repaired. This one works fine. And it even has these little nifty signs. So, depending on what mood strikes me, I could be flammable. You know, maybe I'm eating a lot of beans. I have some gas. What do we have here? Oh, well, contained gas. Looks like a uh, settling can. Oh, the explosion. I guess that's after I fart. What else? That's it. It's too bad it didn't have the nuclear waste one. That would have been awesome. I guess technically, when I'm driving down the road, I shouldn't display those signs if it's not, in fact, containing them. But I got a little... French and English drive safely sign. So tell me what you think. Is this truck with the new engine, 70,000 kilometers on the engine and tranny? What's that? 45, 50,000 miles? Is this truck worth 37.50? certainly couldn't buy a van or a decent RV for that. Certified? I think it's a steal. And they're around. I looked at many. I chose this one, but there were other good ones. I don't know why more people don't go this route. This is going to be stealth. It's going to hopefully be reliable with the new engine tranny brakes, brake lines, tires, a few other things, and it's really low mileage with these the new drivetrain. I want to know if you think this is a steal or if I went wrong. Did I choose the wrong one? You know, in, in the north, people worry about rust. And this one is pretty good. If you look at the rocker panels, the biggest area, there's a little paint off, but there's no rust. Underneath is pretty good. There's a little bit, you know, but... 
that's not uh, too difficult to remedy. Now the passenger side, it's worse. There's definitely some holes, some rust in that rocker panel. But I could have that cut out, a new one welded in, painted for about a thousand. And uh, that I'm willing to deal with. I don't want to deal with engines, transmissions, drivetrain, but one rocker panel, a few days in an auto body shop, not a problem. Now you may have heard, oh, a diesel needs to be a 7.3 liter diesel. Well, I disagree. I want fuel efficiency. And this particular model was made by GM for fuel efficiency. It's, uh, it's a decent engine, maybe not an awesome engine, but it's got the aerodynamic box. It's got uh, one less liter in the displacement, 6.5, not 7 point something. And that's going to save me fuel every time I fuel up. It's going to be money in my pocket that's not going out. And, uh, you know, in Canada, fuel, gas or diesel, runs five to six dollars a gallon. You know, a buck twenty-five, a buck thirty, a buck forty a liter. And it's important for me to keep my fuel costs down because I plan on driving this across Canada, across the U.S., and I don't want 7.3 liters. I want the smallest engine that will do the job. I'm not going to be carrying a lot of weight. This isn't going to be a commercial truck for me. This is just a camper, basically. Very little weight. I want fuel efficiency. And this, I think, is going to be the ticket. Now, because it's a 1997, the emission standards are much, much less. I still have some computers, very minimal, that's going to give me fuel injection, better mileage, computer-controlled fuel into the engine. I don't want an old carbureted van that's going to suck up the gas, you know, something that's 70s or 80s. It's just going to cost me a fortune. This, it's old enough to be reasonable on emissions, but new enough to have decent fuel economy. And to me, that is the sweet spot. The late, mid to late 1990s trucks, whether you go Chevy or Ford, I think that's the spot. That's the sweet spot. That's where you want to be. You get into the 2000s, you have all these computers, and as we all know, when electronics fail and you don't pass emissions, it's money, money, money. And this is going to be much, much cheaper. It does not need DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. All the new ones do. And that's another fluid you got to put in your tank again and again and again. Never for me. Never have to buy it. This is Box Truck Corey, and that's my opinion. Be sure to subscribe so you can watch all the videos as I build this truck out over the coming weeks.